Okay, so hey guys, it's Quinston, and today we are going to talk about the recursive search, a linear recursive search, if I may. I'll just change this a little bit. Linear recursive search. So, um, so we have talked about in the. So I've had a video where I actually discuss uh, linear search, where you take a for loop and you go through the entire um, array one by one uh, using a for loop. But I thought about this, and why not have the same functionality? You know, replicated through a recursive approach. So the thing that I want to stress on here is not really the linear search or whatever. It's more about how do you approach this kind of problem where you have to, you know, take into account the recursion and how you're going to apply recursion. So the, the, let's start with where most programs start. Let's start at the beginning. Um, so first principle is basically, you know, where does the program start executing from? It starts executing from here. Um, so you have this search array over here. So what the search array does basically is it gives you an, uh, a bunch of uh, numbers. So this is a numbers array. So you have 12, 34, 54, 2, and 3. So this is your search array. Now this is what we're going to search for. Now the value of the number defined is 3. So we have this variable over here. This variable is basically called value of the number defined. And that variable is not going to contain the value of 3. So what this basically means is that this is the value that we want to find in this array is the, what the idea is basically going to be through recursively going through one by one. Now, um, so here I'm calling this function called linear recursive search and here I'm passing in the search array and I'm also passing in a random value zero and I'm passing in the value of the number to find. So what number do I want to find in this search array? Now, before we get into the, the actual function, it's not that complicated, but before we get into that, I want to talk, talk about one thing. The, more, the most important thing that I want to talk about is that um, what is this value over here and how does this actually work? So once I call this function, what's going to happen is that it's going to go to uh, the function call, right? Obviously, it's going to go into to the function call. And once it goes into the function call, it's going to check for the first value. Literally, that's off the bat, it's going to check for the first value. Is it the same as the one we want to search for? If it is not, it's going to call the function again. But this time, it's going, to, it's going to check for the next value. Similarly, if it's not the same, if 34 and 3 are obviously not the same, it's going to go ahead and check the next value by another function call. So it's going to keep calling functions. It's going to keep doing a function call for every single element in the array until it finds the number or the value that it is similar to. And in this case, it finds it over here. 3 is equal to 3. That is, that is how the algorithm works at a top level, at an overview. Uh, we'll also see a couple of conditions that we need to um, look at. So when you have a recursive function, now this is a recursive function. I've called it a recursive search literally because it is a recursive search. You can call it whatever you want. It doesn't matter. But the point is that um, a recursive function has um, a base case. A base case is basically a, a, the point at which the recursive function should terminate. The base case is very important. Without a base case, uh, your, your recursive function might keep on running forever, and that is not a good idea. So you always need to have a base case whenever you uh, create a recursive function. So um, now you might be wondering why there's a zero randomly over here, and that zero is basically to cycle through the indexes. If you look at the definition over here, linear rec uh, recursive search, this is the value that uh, you know, represents this value over here, and that is called the index. So this is the index, and this is the value of the number that we want to find. So basically, when you call this, uh, call this function, what basically happens, is it goes, the control flow starts from here, goes here, goes here, and the control flow then goes to the function call because you're calling the function here in the print value. So you're, you are going to print it eventually, but you're going to call it first. And th so therefore, the function call goes to this, um, you know, this, the control flow goes over here. And what does this basically, this is basically a function, right? Yeah. So this function basically takes in the, the array, the index, and the value of the number to find. Now, index. What does this mean? Now, the thing is, this this function, right, this function over here needs to be self-sufficient. It needs to work on every single element equally. Now, you cannot have this function work for one element and then not work for the other element. It needs to be created in such a way that it functions the same 
with every element in the array. Now that is literally how this algorithm basically works. So what is the first uh, thing that I check? The base case. This is the first thing that we check. So what we check is if index is greater than or equal to the length of the array. So if it is equal to, what does that mean? It means that the index is equal to the length, which means that you have gone beyond, you've gone beyond the length of the array. So now checking for a value doesn't make sense, right? Now imagine this, imagine this is the fourth or the fifth um, iteration through this. So what happens is index now is five or whatever, it's five, right? And if index is five and you check the length, it's equal to five, but in the array, the indexes start from zero. So when you say five, it means you have gone past the last element. So once you've gone past the last element, there is no point in checking whether you, there is an element over there because obviously there isn't because you've gone past the length of the array. Got it? Pretty simple, right? Yeah, so that's what happens. And, and in that case, this is a linear search. It's not a binary search. It's not gonna like go through different like different parts of the array it's going to check linearly and if you have crossed the entire array it means the number does not exist inside the array now if the number does not exist inside the array then what do you do you return a minus one because for all we know that number does not exist that number does not exist inside the array so you basically pop out and you basically return and you pop out the control flow and you print a negative one over here so this will basically return a negative one so that was that that's basically what happens and and yeah it it doesn't like yeah i mean you you finish the array you go forward you're done that's it next right if the search array is equal to equal to the value of that you want to find if when you're doing the you know when you're doing the recursion you come to a point where you actually find the value right this search array of index what does this give you search array basically is the search array the array that you want to search through so this is basically the search array in this case and index is basically the current value that you're looking at. And the current value, look, the current index that you're look, looking at. And if that index is equal to the value that you want to find, well, you hit the jackpot, right? You actually found that value. This is equal to equal to. This is the equal to equal to comparison operator. And this is the condition. This condition becomes true in that case. And then you basically return the index plus one value. I return here index plus one. You can even return index because, you know, in general, if you have a value at the fourth position, it means it is at the third in terms of index um, so because the indexes start from zero and uh, so i return an index plus one just because you know it makes more sense um so if this does not execute it basically so these are basically two if statements and both of them are in the control flow so when the control flow uh, so, the, so what i mean by control flow is the control of the program which statements to execute and which do not when the control flow comes over here it checks this value if it's not true it doesn't matter, it just goes to the next if statement and it just goes next. So here, what I'm doing is, um, I, I, I'll also show you an example of why the, we have a return value here. You might be wondering, why don't we just, you know, just write this? Why do we have to add a return over there? That's one of the mo most uh, common questions that you might have. But yeah, the point is you have the linear recursive search and in here you pass in search array. The, again, if you don't, basically this happens if you don't find the element in the array or you don't find the element on the index that you're currently looking at. And then, then you basically say index plus one because you pass in one greater than the current index because you don't want to. So if I say just index again, the same index is gonna check for the same index over and over again. And that's not what we want to do. Okay, and then you check for this index and then it says value of the number defined. So this is basically the same. So basically you have zero at the start. And then as you call the function, as you call more recursive functions, you add one plus one to the index over and over again, and that's how you go through the entire array. And if you find something, you just return it. So why do we use a return over here? Let's take an example and find that out. So in this case, search array is this, and the value of the number to find is three, right? So basically, I'm gonna say print, and I'm gonna call this function. So here, search array is this, zero, and the number, number to find is three. Now, as a method of evaluation, what's, this is gonna evaluate first, right? So, so let's call this, so this, is, this gets called, with all these parameters, it goes in here, and if this is true, so is this true in this case, is index, which is currently zero, greater than the length of the search array? No, of course not. So what happens is it goes over here. Here, search array index, so index is currently zero, let me just write that down, it makes more sense if I write it down. So index is equal to zero in this case, and the search array is, you know what it is, search array, you know what it is, it's literally over here. Search array is over here, so index is zero at this point, 
and what happens is obviously zero not possible okay search array of index of, zero, of search array of zero what's search array of zero it's 12 right it's 12 so 12 equal to equal to number of number to find three um not really they're not, not they're not the same so this does not get executed and then it says return and then this value now this right this part over here when you say return and you check there are two return values above so whatever this returns will this will be replaced with these values in the next call so the next call will when, when the next when this call returns something this will be replaced can you think about that can you imagine that and imagine this once you are stacking these up so basically you're stacking these up right so if you say something like this you're stacking these up you're stacking uh, these up over and over again so it starts from zero it's, go it's gonna be zero first then one two three four five and this is gonna return something to this and this is gonna return to this this is gonna return to this 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 back and forth so it's gonna return like a cascade you know what a cascade is when you have like one a domino fall on top of one another it's, it cascades into a massive domino fall so what's happening is you call this over and over again it's going to accumulate in your stack it's going to accumulate one up one on top of the other and then once you get a value that's actually true or my minus one or this one it doesn't matter which one you get these are the base values these are the base conditions to return once those base conditions are met it just like cascades on top of one another and just and just executes and that is literally how you should think about this and uh, it, it's, it's a cascade it's a stack on top of one another and once the stack is done when the stack evaluates to something that's when you return it over and over again so that's what that, that's how you basically think about this you use this value to basically give it contextual information context this function has no context without the index it doesn't know which element to operate on without the index it doesn't know it doesn't have that information and what you do is you give it contextual information through the function call. So the function call in this case acts as a, as, as a giver of information to, to function on. And if you can observe, it functions the same on every element. It doesn't treat any element as special. It doesn't treat any element as greater than any other element. It is literally implementing the same, um, you know, same conditions, the same contextual information on every fucking, sorry, on every um, on every element so that's literally how this linear recursive search works imagine a stack imagine cascade imagine dominoes when basically dominoes falling backwards is what you need to imagine <laughs> so yeah basically when the last domino falls everything just stands up on top of each other it's like a backwards falling domino it's a very cool effect um, so yeah that's all for this video it's this is a, a very general topic it's very general um, algorithm but I think recursion is something that a lot of people miss out on because it's such a beautiful concept and I wish more people understood it. Um, and if you do understand it, that's good for you. Like, good, good for you, man. So, um, or woman, whatever. <laughs> uh, so thanks for watching, guys. I will see you in the next video. I want to put up more videos, but I just don't get time nowadays. But I'm going to try as hard as possible. So thanks for watching, guys. Like, share, and subscribe to the content if you enjoyed. And I will see you in the next video.